Well, today I get to talk about one of my favorite people in the whole world. I get to introduce him to you. He's a, not only a friend of this house, he's my very best friend in the whole wide world. We have been dear friends, I think since 1991. So it's been a day or two. And it's one of those friendships that's gotten better over time, not worse. It's gotten sweeter over time. It's gotten stronger over time. Uh, he's one of those people that, you know, you need somebody in your life that you can just talk to about anything. Well, he's that guy for me. And, you know, they say you're only as sick as your secrets. So we don't have any secrets. We tell each other everything because we're brothers in Christ. And uh, he has a tremendous, tremendous call and anointing on his life. Um, a few things, interesting things about my dear friend, Jeff Taylor, who's going to be ministering today. I don't know if he's an evangelist or a prophet because God uses him prophetically. And also uh, God uses him with signs, wonders, and miracles and people get saved. So he's a prophetic evangelist and people get saved or he's an evangelistic prophet. I don't know, but, but anyway, you're going to like it either way. He is a cyclist. He's been known to cycle up to over a hundred miles in a single day. Um, he's a tremendous athlete. He's very young for his age. Isn't that right, Jeff? And, uh, and not to mention devastatingly handsome. At least his wife would say amen to that. So he is a lot of fun. He is a man of the word. He knows the word of God. He's a phenomenal teacher. Uh, he is a father. He has one, two, three, four children. And in recent years, he's become a grandfather. His wife, Kelly, is here as well. She a, has a beautiful voice. She's a great singer. Maybe you'll get to hear her sing tomorrow night at School of the Spirit. You don't want to miss that. At 7 o'clock over in the cafe, it's going to be a tremendous hour of power. They're going to lead worship and uh, and minister and train you in some of the things of the Spirit of God. So, um, again, my friend Jeff, he travels the world preaching the gospel. Uh, on this, his side hustle is he invests in real estate. Uh, it's just something that the Lord led him to do. I tried to get into it and do it, but that just wasn't a grace on that for me. But, man, he has multiple properties, and so God has blessed him financially uh, apart from or in addition to the ministry. So he's a brilliant businessman, but most of all, he is an accurate teacher and preacher of the Word of God. I know this is a long introduction, but this guy is one of the most important people in my life. So I want you to pull on the gift of God on the inside of him today. So Harvest Church, please stand to your feet and make a great, big, loud Harvest Church welcome from my best friend, Jeff Taylor. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm looking around and say, who is that guy? It's so, he, I'm taking that video everywhere I go. My goodness, I was like, oh, wow, he's, all those things were true, but, uh, you know, just, it's like having all your business put out on the street right there before you get up, like, okay, now what do I say, you know, he's like, you're looking for something, but uh, how many are ready for the word? All right, let's open our Bibles, let's open our Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Got something to share with you today that I think is going to be exciting, it's going to be uh, it's going to be illustrative. It's going to explain things. It's going to make some things simple. How many know that Jesus made things simple? He talked to simple people about some very complex things. He made complex things very simple. And I like that kind of simplicity. I, I enjoy simplicity. I don't want to stay ignorant, but I do like simplicity. If you can take uh, things. How many enjoy math? Anybody enjoy math? All right. One, two, three. And a lot of hands not going up there. Like a lot of people going, uh-uh, that is just of the devil. Uh, but I enjoy math when you can explain it and it becomes simple because math allows you to do certain things that not knowing certain kinds of math doesn't allow you to do. And it's the same kind of thing in the kingdom of God. When you can take complex things and make them simple, it makes the, it makes the journey a lot easier. And all I'm doing is trying to explain well enough for you to find the slow, find for the slowest person to find 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Because all the way down here in verse number 23, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible says, Now may the God of peace himself, I like that himself, sanctify you completely. The word sanctify is a, is a church word, but can anybody tell me what sanctify means? Set apart. Um, I explain it this way, is that my mother had a set of sanctified dishes. 
which was because they, they, they were set apart. They were put in a cabinet under lights, and they were sanctified dishes. They were the expensive tough, which was great because anytime those dishes came out of that cabinet and got put on the table, we wondered who was coming to dinner. Anybody have a mom like that? Anybody have a saint, have mom had a set of dishes like that? Well, I mean, that, when you put those, and that was a time of rejoicing for me because I lived growing up, we lived, and I, we were very poor growing up, and so we didn't have an appliance called a dishwasher. Our dishwasher's name was Jeff. <laughs> and it kind of started out when I was, you know, six or seven, you know, hey, if you'll do the dishes, we'll give you 25 cents. I don't know where that money went to, but I never saw an ounce of that money. I never saw any of that money. But, uh, I, but I rejoiced when those dishes came out because Jeff didn't have to do the dishes that night. You know why? Because she didn't want him broken. <laughs> and so that, those were sanctified or set apart for a special purpose. And the Bible says here that God wants to sanctify. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you, set you apart completely. And then he goes on to say, now, uh, and may your whole, well, say it with me, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, said, he says here, the, the makeup is spirit, soul, and body. It's interesting because this, this whole deal, this God himself is sanctifying you. Now, here's, here's the deal, is that a lot of people, they, they, they know what, you're, what we're trying to be like. How many know what the goal is? The sanctifying completely is, sanctifying completely is to, to be like Jesus, right? So we're sanctifying, we're set apart to be like Jesus. How many know that you're called to be just like him? All right, tell your neighbor, you're supposed to be just like him. Because some of you are not, some of you must not have known that. That's what you're set apart to. Now, here's the deal. We don't know a lot of times what we're set apart from. We, we, you know, especially in the church, we talk a lot about the two. Listen, I grew up in holiness. Uh, for those, most of you know my testimony. I was born on a Thursday. I was in a Pentecostal church the next Sunday. And doesn't make me, doesn't make me perfect. This just means all my sins were done in church. I don't know why you're all laughing because I'm going to pray for you, you know. <laughs> but the deal is, is that yeah, I, I, I kind of, I grew up in a holiness uh, kind of atmosphere. Pentecostal. I mean hardliner. I mean, you could lose your salvation at the speed of thought. All you had to do is have, a, have a, the wrong thought. See, a pretty girl have a sexual thought, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to hell. I went to hell a lot of times, you know, it seemed like, because I was struggling, you know, struggling to maintain this whole identity. But he, Paul says here that we're supposed to be set apart to, but we're supposed to be set apart from all. I need three volunteers to help me speak this morning. I want to illustrate this idea, this message. So if, if I can get three volunteers uh, that would help me, I promise you I won't be too hard on you, uh, except for two of you. Uh, two out of the three, I, I, but I do need three volunteers. And if you're not going to raise your hand, I'm going to start picking people. And so uh, you will. Perfect. Come on up. There's one. I need two more. You have two. All right, just come on up and stand over here on, on this side. And then I need a third one. That's how, that will complete the process. You'll do it again? Perfect. All right, she did it. She did it so, uh, you did so wonderful. I, I'm going to keep you in the same role. I'll keep you in the same role. And here's what it is. Now, what did, uh, what did first, Thessalonians, uh, first Thessalonians 5, verse 23, so what, are we, what are we sanctifying? This is a great illustration because when God created man, the Bible said, you know, you know what's interesting, uh, what I didn't say in the first service that I'd like to say here is when God created the fish of the sea and the cre sea creatures, he spoke to the water and it gave forth sea creatures. But when he, and when he created, when he created uh, the cattle and all the creeping things, he spoke to the ground and it brought forth cattle. But when he made man, he said, let us. He spoke to himself. Until, now guys, his body was a sandcastle until he breathed the breath of life into him. And God, the Bible says, man became a living soul just like God. See, you're not a dog. 
you're not an animal to be able to have fellowship. I know some of you think you have a lot of fellowship with your pet, but uh, you don't have nearly as much fellowship as someone that's created in the same class and caliber as you are. And God created us in the same class and caliber that he is to have fellowship with us. Isn't that wonderful? All right, y'all quiet. So I'm going to have to, it'll take me a lot longer to explain things the more quiet you are. If I go to get amen now and then, we're going to get you out here before the Baptist. So, but my, the Bible says that God created man spirit, created him with a soul, and he lives in a body. Now, modern psychology or psychology just tells you that you're just, you're nothing more than this, that you're just a soul in control of a body. But in that soul, there's this subconscious area. But the, the thing is, is they're not using the right tools to actually define man because the Bible says in Hebrews, I believe it is chapter six, that the word of God is sharp, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it actually divides, it actually dissects and determines what is the difference between spirit and what is soul. Isn't that wonderful? If you use the Bible, you actually find out who you actually are. Now watch this. When God created man, he created him with a spirit. He's unlimited. He can, do, he can do anything. He has a soul, lives in a body. He's in harmony. He's on this side of the platform. This is the domain of this. We call this the kingdom of God, the, the God realm. We put this in spiritual realm. Spirit's in control, have a soul, live in a body. But the Bible says in, in the garden that God said you cannot eat of this one particular tree because in the day that you eat it, can you help me out here? In the day that you eat it, what will happen? You shall surely die. Did Adam and Eve eat of that tree? Yes, they did. What happened? Did they die immediately? Okay, wait, 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 wait. So some of you are saying other things. How many say he did die immediately? How many say he did not die immediately? All right, so when we have, how many are not going to vote no matter what I ask you? <laughs> oh, I know you, see. Uh. So the deal is, is that he did die spiritually because spiritual death is nothing more than being disconnected from God. The moment he became spiritually, the moment sin entered, the Bible says that sin and death entered into the earth, and he became spiritually dead. When he became spiritually dead, his soul, thank you for being soul, his soul comes and has to take up the slack for the deadness. I'm going to ask you, ask you to do something very dangerous. I'm going to ask you to come stand on your perch. You can slide over just a little bit right here. Just in case she starts wobbling, you make sure that you stabilize her. All right. So soul becomes in control. Now you're limited because, come on, go in. This is body and body. No, keep coming. Yeah, this is body. And so body, how many of bodies always unruly? Get not here. A little bit further. A little bit further. All right. So body, now this is the way the world lives. In this world system, in this world system, this system is constantly defining you. It's telling you what you can do, what you can't do, who you are, who you're not. How many understand that right now, we, the church, is under a barrage of this pressure from the world to give way to what the world thinks should be the norm? And under this world system, it's telling you you're red or you're blue, you're black or you're white, you're into, you're, you're, you are your race, you're, 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 you're not binary. I don't know, what, what is that? Oh, they don't know what gender they are. I'm like, well, did you check the equipment? They're always trying to redefine, watch it, they're always trying to redefine you because that's the world system. He and the author of that system is the master of deceit. And it's constantly trying to dominate. It's telling you who you are, what you can do, how, what your limitations are, what you can and can't afford, where you can go, what, your, what the possibilities are, and it's always setting up limitations on you. 
You under, how many understand this? This system is full of sin and death. This system is ruled by that. And until you separate from it, you're going to be controlled by it. You cannot control that system until you get out of that system. How many are tracking with me? All right, now watch this. So this is the entire world that does not know Christ. The, the entire world that does not know Christ, they're in this condition. But then someone in this condition hears the gospel. They hear the good news. And when they hear that Jesus came, lived, died, rose again on the third day just to get them into the presence of God, and they hear that, and they believe with their heart. Spirit and heart are synonymous terms. Spirit and heart. The moment they believe that in their heart that Jesus is, is, is the Son of God, and he's raised from the dead, and they confess with their mouth, out of their heart, the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of his dear son. There's this transformation. The Bible says that you're made, in that moment, you're made the righteousness of God, that you are complete in him. Old things have passed away. How many know that's not true for soul? Because if you had the same old dirty thoughts you had before you got saved, you might have had them after you got saved. Some of you don't, some, some of you don't remember that. Oh, brother, I don't. Yeah, but, and how many know if you were old before you got saved, you're probably old after you got saved? You didn't get a new body, did you? If you were fat or skinny before you got saved, you probably walked out with the same. Everybody tracking. See, say amen, we'll get out of here faster. That way I know you're getting it. Okay, so here's the deal. So if the Bible says, May the God of peace himself sanctify you, set you apart. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. How are you going to get these two jokers on the, other side of the, uh, on the other side of the boundary? Do you do something? What do you do? Because this, this guy is always in control. You ever, you ever been awake at night because this person's going 90 miles an hour? and just can't seem to be shut down, worry or whatever, fear or whatever, whatever has happened, all of a sudden you can't turn loose of what has happened to you because you got injured or something devastating and all of a sudden there's panic here. There's always in control. Now, guys, listen real carefully. A lot of people that become born again, they stay in this condition right here. This is called a baby Christian. They're born again, but they're still dictated by their senses, still dictated by this world system that controls these two individuals. What do we do with soul? What does the Bible say we're supposed to do this? Do we crucify it? Do we nail it to a tree? What what, what do we do with it? Do we remove it? The Bible doesn't say by, you're transformed by the removing of your mind. It says you're supposed to renew your mind. Everybody say renew. renew. So what does renew means? Well, first of all, it says, I'm going to help you here. Uh, you got to get it, first of all, out of, you, you got to get it out of control. Because you're either having spirits in control or souls in control. Smile like you actually kind of, you might understand what I'm talking about. You got to get soul out of control. In other words, I don't ask soul about the problem first. I don't go looking into what Google says or what YouTube has to say first before asking my Lord about it. So the first thing I got to do is I got to I got to get it out of gear. I got to get it out of control. And the next thing I got to do is I got to find from the scripture how I'm supposed to see what I'm seeing. How do I see myself? How do I see my marriage? How do I see my money? How do I see my health? How do I, how do I see the areas of my life? Because the Bible has something to say about all those areas. How many can testify to that? Say, I'm tracking with you, Brother Jeff. I'm tracking with you. 
Okay, the deal is, is that once that word comes to your mind, you have a choice. Do you either replace that lens or do you somehow try to squeeze it in to the same lens? Because they're, they're going the opposite direction. Because the Bible says, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, and they cannot be understood or discerned because they are spiritually. So, so we remove the, we don't remove the mind, we renew it by replacing the thoughts with other thoughts. We're going to keep coming, we're going to keep coming, we're going to keep coming, because soul is your boss now. In this realm, guys, here's, how is, how is, how is spirit in, in control? It's in control when you believe God's word. We call that F-A-I-T-H. Faith doesn't make sense. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. It doesn't, it, and soul is like, ah, I, I, don't, I don't like this because I don't have control of this. And we're going, perfect, because we're going to believe the word. And this is when soul is in, this is when spirit has the dominant force, is when faith is guiding. The just shall live by faith is of the heart. Faith is of the spirit. Faith keeps you out of this side over here, and it keeps you moving with God. Perfect. All right, perfect. All right, one more time. Amen. Good. All right, so is there any hope for this one? <laughs> this right here. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to be dirty, but all this, all, all this wants to do is, is be unspiritual. I mean, you try and tell it you're going to fast. You're like right after breakfast. <laughs> all the way to lunch. You try and say, pray, how about a nap first? We, we're going to pray. I mean, all it wants to do is eat, sleep, have sex. You know, I mean, that's, that's what body, that's the appetites of the body. <laughs> we're in church, right? Well, I ought to be honest, because y'all looking like you don't. Well, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Let me slap you. Because you know what bodies, your body is what got you in trouble in the first place. That's why you had to come to the cross. It was because usually this character, it's got appetites. And some of them are big. And some of them <laughs> don't want to be told no. So what do we do with body? Do we crucify? crucify? You don't kill it. You don't kill the body. When you kill the body, you go to jail for it. <laughs> or you go to heaven. I mean, you know, I mean, you don't kill the body. What do you do? That You don't kill it. You control it. How do you do that? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present. Everybody say present. Present, present means you tell it no when it wants to do what it wants to do. You present your body. My body gets sick. I tell it, no, you don't get to be sick. You don't get to say, you might catch something, but you're not staying that way. Why? Because I'm presenting my body. It's not just about the holiness issue. This is not just about holiness because that's where, that's where the majority of the church stays. Gosh, keep this thing out of sin. Well, yeah, but the, there's another side to it that I have to present my body. In other words, I don't let it have just always what it wants. Sometimes it wants chocolate sundaes at 12 midnight. How many know that you need to present your body at 12 midnight? And if, it, if you let it, it will take you advantage of you. Your appetites don't know what it's good for. So sometimes, I know a lot of people could save themselves a lot of healing prayer if they just eat right. And I'm a healing minister. But the deal is, is that if, if, if people would go, it, it take care of their body a little bit better, you could keep you out of a heal, lot more healing lines. Amen. <laughs> now, here's the deal. We present. We present. So sometimes it comes kicking and screaming. I don't do that. Oh, oh darn. But the deal is, is that it has, it, it's presented. Now, when this, the more you do this, the more you look like Jesus. It loves the unlovable. It believes the unbelievable. 
It does the impossible. Why? Because you're in the domain of the kingdom of God to bring the kingdom into this earth, and this is the way you do it. Does this make sense? Now, would you come here? What's your name? Hope. Hope? Perfect. Come here, Hope. Hope is in the soul and in the spirit. Now, watch this. I want you to take your perch again. Are you okay there? All right. All right. So, the majority of the Christians that I come in contact with, this is the condition that they're in. What do you mean by that? They're born again. They may be even tongue talkers, spirit filled, Holy Ghost people. They may be spirit filled. They, they, for the most part, they're keeping their body away from the big stuff. They're dodging the sins. They're, they're doing their best they can to live the way they need to live. But the problem is, is that they're still dominated by an unrenewed mind because they go to checking this world system to see if anything else is possible. They're connected to this. They're still not set apart from this world system because this world system still is dominating the way they see things. And as long as that happens, this is hold, this unrenewed part of your mind is holding everything else back to where you, you don't get to enjoy as much of the fellowship of the Lord because you're always seeming like you're, you're always never enough. I was made the righteousness of God in him, but mine says, well, but I don't, is that really enough? The Bible says you're complete in him. That's sure not at the body and it's sure not in the soul, but I'm complete. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Does this make sense? So the only way I can do this is checking, am I going and thinking like the world thinks, because the world's going to think you're crazy, because you're going to be able to be successful at doing things in that realm and controlling that realm, but not being a part of that realm. Remember what Jesus said? He said, you are not of this world. I gave you my word. You're not of this world, just as I'm not of this world. He said, I didn't ask you to take the disciples. I didn't ask you. I'm not taking. I'm not asking you to take us out. You know, a lot of Christians, they, they, they've got this rescue mentality. Oh, God, just get us out of here. That's not the plan. That's never been the plan. He said, I want you to stay in this world. You're going to have some tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've already overcome that system. I'm, 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 I'm going to help you here. Uh, you know, he said, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not asking you to get them out. I'm asking you to leave them in but not be controlled by this system. So the moment you do that, what you do is you're saying, Lord, I believe you in spite of what my mind tells me, in spite of what the natural says, in spite of what my family tells me, in spite of what everybody else, what my boss is telling me, I believe you because I want to be like Christ here in the earth. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Would you give these guys a great big hand for helping me? Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And you're a double, you're, you're, she was spirit twice. So here's the point is it comes down to this. You are your, your spiritual climb up the ladder, so to speak. You're the most spiritual at your most carnal thought. That's how, how spiritual. Now, I know that we come in here, we look good, we talk, we shake hands, we're, and, and we're trying to present, but the deal is, is that I love, you guys have it on the side of the building. There's no perfect people allowed. I love that because what that does is that we're all in this process of being transformed into his likeness. Now, there may be some of you in here that you've got, you've got some areas that you've got mastered. You're good. You're, you're good. But there may be other areas that you're not quite as mastered at. There may be, there may be other areas that you're, you're feeling like, I'm pretty confident. But there may be these areas that you don't quite have it. What that does, the areas that we're weak, it just takes us digging back into that word a little bit more. Because if the information you had was enough, you'd have victory in that area. So you got to go back for a little bit more information. 
a little bit coming back to the Lord. Lord, you said you'd be my helper. You'd be my guide. You'd be, you reveal truth to me. Lord, I, I'm, I, I'm not seeming to have enough victory in this one area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you for a little bit more information. See, I, 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 I was helping my daughter with her math. She didn't really like math because she likes English and writing and history. She likes a lot of that stuff. But this math stuff, why do I got to do this? I said, because there's checkbooks out there. There's checkbooks out there. There's math you got to do in life. You got you to, why? I said, because if you want to have success in this, you know, you need to know addition and subtraction at least and not get into the red. That's a good dad. But the deal is, is if, if, you, if you don't have enough information, you can, you can find yourself being frustrated trying to use that same information to have the same success that maybe others are seemingly having. And God doesn't want, he's not hold, withholding any information from you. The Bible says very clearly that in the book of James, if any of you lacks wisdom, how many lacks wisdom in here? Any, anybody not raising their hand, just let them know that th they're wrong. Any of you lack wisdom in here? I'm holding my hand up. Any of you lacks wisdom? That's what James says. Any of you lacks wisdom? What are you supposed to do if you lack wisdom? You are to ask of God. How many believe that God has the wisdom that you need? Yeah. Okay. So no question about that. But he said, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because God gives to all liberally. He gives this wisdom liberally. And he's not even going to badmouth you for it. He said he upbraids. The King James says he upbraids not. Which means is that he's not going to go, what's the matter with you? Why, why, why don't you know this already? Not going to do that. If you ask him for his help, he's going to give you his help. And he's liberal with his help. He's liberal with his wisdom. But you got to believe that he gives it at that time. The Bible said, let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Because the man that doubts, what are you going to doubt? You don't doubt that you need the wisdom. You don't doubt that God's got the wisdom. But you might doubt that God gives the wisdom at the time you ask. He's going to give it to you. He is giving you. And the moment you ask, he does give it. But don't check your soul for what he's giving to you in your heart. I tell people all the time, I pray, I pray for people fit for physical healing. We've seen marvelous testimonies. Thousands and thousands of people have seen, we've seen people healed, and it's been wonderful. But I said, don't check your body to see if heaven's doing anything. You can't check your body because your body, how many know your body's never registered for what's going on in heaven? Your body's never registered for what's going on in heaven. But the moment you believe that you receive, that power goes to work in you. That power goes to work in you and begins to affect a cure. Guys, today, I know there are areas that you may, you may be here today and you may have never given your heart to the Lord. But there may be some of you that are here that, that you have, uh, you've been taking a look at this and going, you know what, there's some stuff I, I need to, I, I need to, I need to get, I need to get this I need to get this under control. I need to get, I need to be doing better in these areas. And if you're here today and, and there's something that stands between you and the Lord, if there's something that you, you've been cycling through or you've, you, you're, you're going over it or struggling with, or you've allowed something into your heart, if you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life yet, I want to tell you, this is the time to do it right now. Today is the day of salvation. And if you're here today and you don't know, I want to I invite you to know the Lord. It's very simple, very easy. But if you're here today and you, there's an area that you need, to, you need to get cleaned up, I don't think I need to explain that, but you just know that your heart condemns you. You're just not, I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about you know you've allowed some things in your life you shouldn't have allowed. And you need to get that clean. I want you to raise your hand. We're not going to close our eyes. We're not going to... We're not going to close our eyes or bow our heads because this is a safe place. This is a place where people can come. We put it on the side of the, we put it on the, side of the building. No perfect people. Man, I mean, uh, we, we all, we're all in this process together. But if that's you, one more time, lift your hand up and say, Lord, I, I know I need some areas. 
if that's you and you really mean business, I, I'm going to do something different because this is my service. Pastor's not here, so I get to do my kind of what I want to do. So would you stand up? If you mean business with God and you got your hand raised, stand up with me, would you? Would you do that? This is how, this is how things work around with me. And here's the deal. I, if you're really, I mean, if you're really serious about this, get out of your seat and come stand down here with me. Just come down, stand. Come on. Do I have to go down there? Yeah. Yeah, you do, because your body's not wanting to. Your soul's trying to tell you, ah, do I have to do that? And don't, 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 don't spread out. Come on. Just call, kind of, we're not doing a prayer line thing. We're just, come on, come on, come on, jump in here. Yeah, come on close. Come close. I put my deodorant on, and I got my cologne on, so I, I'm, I'm good. And this jacket, I'm telling you, my wife got me this jacket a few weeks ago. It's fly. The kids say it's fire, but 50-year-old men shouldn't say fire. I, I'm told that we shouldn't say it's fire. But it's like fire. Mm-hmm. Looking good. My wife's taking care of me. Listen, I respect your honesty. That's the one thing that God can use. He can really use honesty. When you say, Lord, I can't do this on my own. I don't have all this. I need your help. That's the biggest thing God needs. He just needs somebody to say, Lord, I, I need you here. I need you in my life in this, in this area. And your honesty and your willingness to kind of get out of your seat and do what the preacher, ridiculous preacher is asking you to do. I know it's not easy, but what you're doing is you're breaking that whole doing it my way. And you're saying, Lord, I'll do it. If it takes that, I'm going to go forward. And I respect that. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to ask the Lord's help. We're going to invite the Lord to help us today. And today, I expect victory in every area of your life, your marriage, your relationships, your body, your mind, fear is just going to absolutely go from here. Worry is going to be, is going to be popped right out of your system. Now, if you adopt it, once you leave here, that's up to you. But the deal is, is that it's going to leave today. Every time we share the word of God, Jesus shows up to confirm it. And he's here right now. He stays with me and I feel I feel him now, and he's going to help us because you're honest. So let's do this. This is a simple prayer, but just just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is your only begotten son. He died. He rose again just for me. I believe that and confess him as Lord over my life. Now, Lord, I repent of areas that I'm struggling with. I'm asking for your help in ways that I can't help myself. I believe you for it. In Jesus' name. If you will, just take, take a moment right now and just kind of put a circle with you and Jesus in it. Right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come by. I, I'm just gonna, I just want to touch you on the forehead just as a point of contact, just to release whatever I can to assist you in your spiritual journey. I'm asking the Lord to to give you a power, to give you an anointing, a presence, an ability, a grace to do, to break whatever may be trying to habitually just cling to you. Father, I thank you. If you're in the audience, if you would, would you pick out somebody and just pray with them? Just kind of Make that, your, make that your prayer partner right now in the name. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Jesus. His power is very real. Father, I thank you for doing a work in my friends. I thank you for doing a work to those that have come forward and said, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I thank you for doing a great work in them. Lord, doing a, a wonderful work that w- when they start looking at themselves and taking inventory, that they think, Lord, you are working in my life. And it wasn't because of my, all my great ideas, or my great power, but I thank you that you're helping me. You said you helped me. Father, I thank you for it in Jesus' precious name. Lord, I thank you for doing the work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your ability. Lord, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of men and women here. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Help my friends, Lord. Help my friends. Help them in a way that they've not been helped. Oh, yeah, I thank you. 
I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Oh, I give you the glory. I give you the honor. You're doing something wonderful in their life right now. Oh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something. While I was praying for some of you, and this happens occasionally, while, while, while I was praying for you, there are some of you that the injury that other people have done to you, the words that were said, the sting of those words has been removed. But you need to forgive them. There are, there are people that have said words that tried to define you. And I, I could lay my hands on it. There are several of you that I could I lay my hands on, and, and, and it just felt like the Lord said, I'm wiping those memories out. I'm wiping that even the sting or the effect of what those things did, things that you went through, he's wiping that out and making it new. Would you believe, would you just raise your hand and begin to thank him for that freedom? Lord, I thank you that you're doing a work in these folk. I thank you for what you're doing a work in my friends right now, that you are making things new for them. I praise you and I give you the glory and the honor. You're expunging their own record, but Lord, you're also, uh, you're, you're just expunging the things that have been done against them as well. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. You believe that? Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Let's give the Lord a praise offering one more time. Lord, we do praise you. You can return to your seat. You can return to your seat. Someone's, uh, London's going to come and she's going to tell you what the next steps are. But thank you for being here and thank you for giving me a little extra time uh, to be pa and being patient with me. How many enjoyed the illustration this morning? Did, did, was it, did it help you? Did it explain things? All right. Thank you. God bless you, London.